Okay, hello to everyone. Uh, my name is Arna Morales. I'm going to present uh, a bit of an update of Faro for artificial intelligence. Uh, I work in the INRIA team, uh, the aircraft team in Lille in France. Uh, now, uh, now in part of in charge of developing part of, of Faro. But of course, that uh, the Faro AI has uh, multiple collaborators. I think uh, some of them are here, maybe Gabriel and, and, and other people from the Buenos Aires small talk community. And, um, <clears throat> okay, so the talk I, I want to organize in two parts. Um, <clears throat> first, uh, machine learning introduction, what, what is machine learning, what some of their uses, and the types of problems that it solves, and then some of the update of what we have currently in the Faro ecosystem. So for the introduction, uh, what is machine learning? And um, just, uh, this is a big momentum for, for machine learning. So I think that everyone knows, but uh, the definition for who coined or popularized the term, that uh, it's a field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. This is by Arthur Samuel. Um, but uh, one one common uh, way to see the the field is to divide uh, the <clears throat> the field in three. The artificial intelligence uh, has a wall which includes techniques which enable machines to mimic uh, human behavior. This is uh, the where there are components like inference engines, and and they are like very popular in the seventies. Uh, and they, they work by applying uh, logical rules to knowledge bases. And inside we have the, the machine learning, uh, the classic machine learning as a subset, uh, which uh, includes the statistical methods. And uh, inside that, that we could say that there is the deep learning um, uh, with the convolutional networks and generative adversarial networks and so on. Uh, but uh, uh, here we, we are going to see more the the traditional machine learning, uh, which is a bit different of the deep learning, uh, which is of uh, in use a lot today. Uh, in the sense that in the traditional machine learning, with the humans are part of the of the processes uh, doing feature extraction, uh, and in the deep learning, this is all uh, supposed to work. Uh, immediately or um, automatically um, without counting the, uh, the GPT hallucinations and so on. Uh, and uh, machine learning, of course, that we could, the classic machine learning, we, we could divide it in uh, supervised machine learning when you work with the uh, labeled data. Um, for example, this is represented in, in data frames or, or tables where you have a column with, the annota with an annotation of of, uh, for example, our, our ranking, if you're doing uh, sentiment, sentiment classification, for example, you could have a, a column with the, the score, the ranking of a movie, or um, you could predict if, if it was uh, analyzing the text, if it was positive or, or negative review. And you have uh, unsupervised uh, machine learning, which is clustering is apart, and this is studied by just looking at the data and to discover the groups and basically extracting patterns from the data. And uh, we have, of course, the reinforcement learning that uh, deals with the rewards uh, based learning and, and those algorithms for uh, specific for reinforcement. So basically machine learning is great for, for problems with uh, requires a, a lot of, of rules, uh, a lot of coding, uh, about uh, different rules and decisions um, for complex problems and, and fluctuation environments like the financial markets and, and finally getting inside when you have a complex data or big data which doesn't fit in mem into memory. So, however, it has some, some, some drawbacks. But as, for example, the uh, explainability is sometimes could be uh, really conclusive and this could bring some doubts about it, and and as they, they they cannot be the algorithm produce results that cannot be easily explained. 
and it also requires a good amount of data to to train the models. So some examples of applications are like uh, image classification or, or disease detection and uh, text summarization, of course, uh, a lot of forecasting, especially in the financial domain. And of course, augmenting clients uh, using uh, using uh, unsupervised classification. So what we have in the Faraway library, um, uh, so there is a GitHub repository and the idea is to offer a, a unified interface to for the basic buildings of, of machine learning. And we have uh, the GitHub organization where we push uh, code and documentation in, in a wiki, or we have a convention for, for names of the packages and the classes. And uh, there is a, a meta repository which is just called AI to, to load everything at once. And um, how, how do we position ourselves? So uh, we have, uh, of course, uh, there are uh, specific subfields of, of machine learning and we have for, for data analysis and manipulation, we have a data frame, uh, which is uh, uh, in charge of, of the data wrangling. Uh, for example, uh, the reshaping and pivoting or organizing different columns in rows uh, and so on, and we could merge and, and join and and do everything with with the frame and do queries. And we have for algebra, for scientific computing, we, we have a uh, polymath, which is equivalent of NumPy uh, and SciPy or or SparseM and R. And the idea is that. Uh, they provide the, the polymaths provide the matrices, summary statistics like for central tendency or, or dispersion and continuous and discrete dis distributions and so on. And, uh, and uh, for the classic machine learning, we are like positioned in the, in the same level as scikit-learn uh, of Python. And there is some work in, unfortunately, it's not unmaintained, but there is some work for deep learning uh, using the TensorFlow binding. And for visualization, uh, we mostly use uh, RAWFAL3. So this is somewhat uh, combined to work with machine learning in Faro. So as a first step of <clears throat> of uh, working with the machine learning uh, work in, in a machine learning workflow, we have a uh, a uh, data preparation uh, stage. There is basically two checkpoints uh, working with machine learning. One is is uh, the, to train a model, and the other one is to deploy a model. And for training a model, uh, some data preparation is required. So we have some packages uh, there to to perform some data exploration. Uh, we have, for example, a synthetic data set generator. Um, uh, to, for the cases where do you not have uh, enough data to train a model, and uh, and we have uh, uh, edit distances to 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 measure the um, to measure to take some metrics uh, between the data. We have uh, there Euclidean Manhattan and Levenstein, which are really well known algorithms for measuring uh, measuring the distance between the strings. Uh, we have a uh, uh, a Faro library for partition in a collection, which is random partitioner, and this is given a proportions. It is splits the the data set, which is uh, very common when preparing uh, a data set for training. Um, so uh, it shuffles the collection and divides in not empty in non empty subset. And uh, we have uh, for normalization for this is part of also of data preparation to change the value of numeric columns or they are in the same scale. And we have also um, some metrics to to measure the performance of of different machine learning models. For example, for for classification, uh, we have the the accuracy and F1, which is based on precision and recall. And we have for clustering, which we, we have uh, the metrics for clustering, which are Shakar or uh, Rand index or just a Rand index. And for regression, we have a uh, mean square or error square uh, error metrics. And that is that is the part for for data preparation. So we really have some some tools to to start working with data sets. And um, 
some some of the machine learning algorithms that we have is uh, for classical machine learning, of course, um, the unsupervised uh, algorithms which are for for descriptive uh, analytics mostly, which answer the question what what's uh, yeah, what just happened with with some data and with here we do not expect result just we are just looking at the data and um, and there we have of course a, a subfield of clustering with the k-means which is a very popular algorithm to, to feel to being fast and it, it uh, is a non-overlapping clustering a clustering method but uh, as a drawback requires that uh, you choose the the k uh, the the number of groups that you think that the 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 cluster the clustering algorithm will 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 result in and and that is cool that's cool that could be a drive back because uh, a poor uh, a bad uh, choice of k will will affect the the performance of the classif of the clustering algorithm and um of course, we started to implement uh, hierarchical uh, agglomerative clustering algorithms, um, but uh, this requires to to implement some some uh, object for the program and seriation and chain and everything. So this is not finished yet. And um, for for pattern search, uh, which is another area, we have a priori algorithms, which is uh, like a, for association uh, rule mining. This is, uh, for example, for for market based analysis when you when there there is you have a client a uh, customer which uh, chooses a, a product and you want to see you want to recommend which other product uh, you could recommend to him that because they are usually taken together, um, and we have also uh, algorithms for uh, dimensionality reduction for for example t, t distribute. Uh, Stochastic neighbor uh, embeddings and um, principal component analysis. Uh, this, these are mathematical methods to used to reduce the number of, of features, um, but preserving the the, the the explanation the to that the in such way that that the variables uh, now can still represent the 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 the, the previous variables. And uh, of course, we have a lot of things uh, to do yet. Uh, so some algorithms like density-based uh, spatial clustering, uh, expedition maximization, mean shift, and and, and others, um, which are yet to be still implemented. And uh, for predictive analytics, which are supervised uh, machine learning uh, algorithms, uh, which this this answer the question what what could happen in the future um for for classification the, what do you expect the, as a category as output uh, we have the the naive base which are by, based on the probability theory and the base theorem um uh, we have decision trees where you have the a condition as a root node and different testing nodes and uh, at the at the least you have decisions uh, nodes. Uh, this is encoded as an algorithm, and this is very it's widely used. And we have a logistic regression, which is a, a linear classification method. And we have also, of course, uh, we have a regression supervised regression like uh, linear. This is our to help to reduce overfitting. Uh, this is a helper method for for classification, uh, for other classification uh, uh, algorithms. And finally, we have uh, another supervised uh, method, which is uh, based on optimal hyperplanes. Um, yeah. In we have a variant implemented, which is the soft, uh, the soft uh, version of of support vector machines. And um, uh, we also have a car nearest neighbor to to predict the class of a, of a label of a new data point, for example. Uh, this this also requires uh, labels, of course. 
and um, we have yet to to implement uh, polynomial regression for example there are some still work to do in this area and another another interesting uh, subfield that uh, we have some uh, there are some implementations in natural language processing where we have uh, stop words to to remove uh, those uh, words which are not interesting in a data set for like, for example articles on and words without uh, particular meaning. Um, and we have a package for spelling correction uh, and uh, enigrams, which to split text into onigrams, bigrams, and trigrams, and, and so on. This is a sequence of, of characters. Uh, this is useful, for example, for the, um, for for part of a speech tagging and, and everything. These are like basic blocks where you could build something else. I, uh, above and uh, the term frequency and uh, inverse document frequency this gives the the relevance of a word into in a document so if you have a word but which appears uh, a lot but is not uh, really important you can filter out and you can you could give like uh, more more particular words more significance in a corpus of documents and the um, and we have, of course, the graph algorithms, which are we have Tarian, uh, Breed, Fred, First Search, and Graph Reducer, um, uh, to to merge all the strongly connected uh, components in a graph to into a single node. And we have Dijkstra to to the shortest path of a weighted uh, graph, and Bellman four, for example, which is not mentioned here, and Cruz Cole, and so and also topological topological sort we have also implemented and finally i, I just wanted to show that uh, 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 just an example for example how to how to use it with the principal component analysis with the iris data set uh, there is a, a package to which has a commonly used data sets like for example iris and boston these are really well known data sets to for for the machine learning community and how to how to work? We we use the the metric from from polymath and and just instantiate on uh, uh, the 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 algorithms and just gives the the matrix the transform matrix and finally we can plot using uh, using uh, the Rosal visualization library. So um, basically, is that that is what we have uh, so far. Uh, there is a, a lot of work to do, of course, and uh, the idea of the library is not uh, at least yet to be uh, competitive with the uh, scikit-learn or, or, or such libraries, which have, uh, of course, hundreds of developers behind. And uh, uh, as you probably know, there is a there is not as a community, we don't have enough resources to to keep uh, like uh, in line with with those big projects. But uh, I think think that is a good library uh, to learn uh, about uh, algorithms, artificial machine learning algorithms, and there is a lot of room to to grow, of course. So that that's what uh, the an overview of the of the library. So. Here we, you could visit the the wiki. There's a lot of documentation in in the wiki. Um, you could just start to to comment and contribute on whatever comment that that you want. Thank you. How do you compare the uh, performance of uh, those algorithms with another programming language and? Yes, we, we we have. I didn't mention, but we have a fast uh, linear algebra binding implemented, uh, which is uh, the library is implemented in Fortran, and um, and the performance was was pretty similar with, with the one uh, with the binding in, in in Python, for example. So I didn't show because I, I thought that I won't have time. But uh, yes, we have a benchmark, and uh, of course the performance of of the native. A library because uh, we also compare uh, uh, the implementation with the native Faro uh, implementation against the, the Python. Of course, that there was some difference there, but as a binding, uh, we have a uh, um, it's pretty pretty competitive there. Yes. Okay. Uh, the library is called Lapac, just to mention. <laughs> Where's a good? Uh, what's a good place to start playing with it? Because uh, it looked uh, 
so many repositories. I, I wouldn't know. I, I would just like to start playing. And uh, if you ask me for the the, the, the order to, to start to play, uh, I think that uh, most uh, tutorials I've seen that they recommend starting with Decision Trees, which is one of the most popular, and then move to Ka Nearest Neighbor on Org and then Camins, which are, uh, this is like the standard path to to follow when learning about machine learning. But it, it all ends up with the with the, your own use case because you could have uh, some clustering problem or it's, it's generally if the data collection, the data collection is cheap and the labeling is, is also cheap, you could use supervised learning on. But are the repositories all independent of each other? Or? No, the, there is everything in the, uh, under Faro AI uh, in GitHub and the, there is a, this is an organization which has all the, the repositories. But what should you load first? I, uh, I don't know where to start um, loading because there's... 40 repositories, yes. but I didn't see a load script for... No, ah, there is a, a meta package, which is just AI. Okay. That, and that will install everything. Okay, thanks.